Germany hosts the Winter Olympics. Hoover Dam is completed. Nazi Germany reoccupies Rhineland. The year is 1936, and this car was available at any Buick showroom. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that talks history and design of these rolling works of art. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, Lots of orphan cars and cars that are frankly being forgotten. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1936 Buick Special Series 40 is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over 850 cars for sale when recording this episode. Anybody can go there. It doesn't cost anything to get in. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car, be sure to click the link below after the show. 1936 Buick model lineup. 1936 was the first year Buick used names instead of series titles, but the series titles were still there. So you had this special in the basement, which rode a wheelbase of 118 inches, also called the series 40, followed by the Century, which rode a longer 122 inch wheelbase, also known as series 60, Roadmaster followed it on a longer wheelbase of 131 inches, also known as Series 80. And then at the top was the Limited, which was on the longest wheelbase on offer, 138 inches, also goes by the name of Series 90. Sometimes you'll see numbers like 3640 or 3690. 36 is the year, and then the next number is the model number. So if it's a 40, it's model 40. If it's 90, it's model 90. Buick Special was introduced in 1936 and would be produced from 36 to 42. World War II happened. They came back in 46 through 58. They took a two-year break, brought it back for the final assault from 1961 to 1969. The Special would play all of the fields, being full-sized from 36 to 58, compact from 61 to 63, and mid-sized from 64 to 69. Buick Special took the place of two cars, Buick's Junior Series, the Marquette Model 30, and the Buick Standard 6. It's important to note the special name was first introduced in 1936. Series 40 goes back even farther to 1930, but wasn't special until 1936. You see what I did there? It's also important to note that in 1930, the Series 40 was powered by an overhead valve inline six. They went to overhead valve inline eight in 1931. Built on the GM B-body platform and could be had as a two-door business coupe, two-door four-passenger rumble seat coupe, two-door convertible, two-door Victoria, and four-door sedan. 1936 saw a facelift, so 35 Series 40 on top, 36 Special on the bottom, and this is why we do these comparisons. 35 is such a nice looking car that I never knew existed. Just about everything is different, but let's talk about similarities. Both are built by Buick. Both are four-door sedans. Both have headlights that are mounted to the hood. Fenders, bumpers, grills, hood ornaments, all different. Single windshield on the 35 versus split windshield on the 36. Also notice the wipers are mounted on top on the 35, on the bottom on the 36. Small dog dish hubcaps on the 35 versus 36. Looking at the side profile, just look at the different fender profiles. The 35 has more of an edge, whereas the 36 is more round and curvy. Just look at how different the bodies are. The 35 looks more formal. 36 is curvier. Both have in-body trunks. Looking at the rear and the rear window on the 35 is a single piece window versus a split window on the 36. Bumpers are different. The 35 has a mounted spare tire at the rear, whereas the 36 spare tire is mounted on the side. Two different dash and interior layouts. Which one do you like better in the comment section below? I really like the 35. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of 118 inches. It weighs 3,360 pounds. Price, $885, which is equivalent to you spending $19,363.48 in the year 2023. Total, 1936 Buick, 
Production was 168,596 units. Total special was 113,097 units, or about 68% of all Buicks made that year. Four-door sedan was 77,007 units. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 233 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve in line eight, 3.7 liters. It's good for 93 horsepower at 3,200 RPM. This one didn't have a torque figure, but I did find a torque figure converter online. So this is an estimated torque figure of 152 pound-feet of torque at 1600 RPM. Bore of 3.1 inches, stroke of 3.9 inches, five main bearings, mechanical lifters, alanite pistons. Important side note, this is the only Buick that had this engine in it, this special. The Century, the Roadmaster, the Limited had a more powerful inline eight Let's talk chassis. This is for series 40. I got all of this from advertisements, but it differs between series. Independent front suspension, notice the A-arms and not I-beam front axle. This car uses a torque tube. For those unfamiliar with the term, it's essentially a cover for the drive shaft that secures the rear end in place during acceleration and braking. The drive shaft spins inside that tube. It's more or less for rigidity. Hotchkiss Drive put an end to the torque tube. Semi-floating rear axle with semi-elliptical leaf springs in the rear. Tiptoe hydraulic brakes at all four corners. Centrifuge brake drums, 12 by one and three quarters inch. Synchro mesh transmission. All the gears are nickel chromium. Delco double acting shocks in front and rear. Electric system, Delco Remy. It's a two unit, six to eight volt system. Clutch, single plate dry, nine and a half inches. The chassis itself has an X brace in the center for rigidity. Center point steering, locking steering wheel, as well as locking ignition. And just remember, no other car in the world has all of these features. Side note, so reading through the ads, which is honestly the best source to get information to do these car reviews, who knows their product better than the company trying to sell it? Oil filtration was optional, according to the ad on all models but the special. And get this, the cartridge is to be changed every 10,000 miles. I wonder when the 3,000 mile gold standard came into play, because this is 1936 oil. They didn't have synthetic oil. Also, the filter isn't in the block itself. It has lines going to it, and I wonder if anybody could make an upgrade like a special oil pan with a special filter attached to the oil pan somehow so that you can benefit from in-block oil filtration. Those lines are small and grit could block oil from getting to the filter or sludge. Anyway, so let's talk styling. There's a lot going on with this design. Look at this hood ornament. Grill. Look at how these headlights are mounted. They're on pedestals, but they're mounted right here to the hood. Ever so slight fender crease. Look at these. Aren't those gorgeous? Side markers. And the line continues all the way down to the running boards. Just look at this fender design. Also check out the catwalk here. Look at the subtle line here at the top of the hood, as well as these lines that come off of the hood and all of this nice bright work. It's designed. Also check out this part here. It's its own shape. Looks like a spear. Coming back to the front down below, this bright work here. The bumpers have nice pinstriping inside, but not just pinstriping, it's actually channeled. I love the um, bumperettes or overriders. This car has one side mount on the driver's side. This nice Buick badge. 
just look at the design of this fender. Love the wheels. Rocker trim. This car is teardrop shaped. It comes to, this is the widest point right here for the body. The rear fenders, how they're designed. Tail lights. The rear bumper matches the front bumper. Getting in the trunk. It's got a nice spring loaded catch. But just check out this trunk. It's pretty big, all things considered. Look at these door handles. They look like they could hurt you if you got in an accident. Just look at how this is all dished. This car doesn't have drip rails. It just has this one little drip pad, I guess. It's just ever so slightly flared out. Here's what the door looks like. Just look at how deep this is. It's got a nice cloth material that goes the whole length of the door. Carpet at the bottom. Armrest, door handle to pull the door shut. Window crank for the big window, operates like this. Vent window, which is crank operated as well. Door handle to get out. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. Hand brake, high beam switch for the headlights. Clutch, brake, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. I just wanna back up for a second. This is as far open as the door opens. Just look at the seat to kick panel ratio. Here is my foot for reference, just so you know. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Underneath, there is adequate space to put my hand between my lap and the steering wheel. I wear size 36 pants, wear the same size pants as me. You will fit in this car just fine. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, starter button. One gauge cluster, coolant temperature, amp meter on the left, speedometer with odometer in the center, gasoline gauge, oil pressure on the right, headlights, lighter. This one doesn't seem to have a radio, which was optional. There are two T poles. The one that is adjacent to the L is the one that's supposed to be there. And that is throttle control. The other one I'm taking a guess because in all the other pictures of dashboards that I've come across, I didn't see the other pole in that location. It could be for an accessory. It could be for a hand choke because these cars had automatic choke. Maybe the owner wanted manual choke. Who knows? Clock. Up above, there are sun visors and they look like this. They are quite nice. Look at how they hinge down from the, the top. That's interesting. Rear view mirror in the center. This one does have the cowl air vent. So if you see right up here, this little trap door opens and it allows air to come down at your feet get rid of the hot air coming off the firewall and that is the highest setting on to the glove box test here's our test subject here's my hand for reference here is our glove box in question man just look at how massive that is good how are you man good look at yeah Coming to the rear door, it's a lot like the front door, only it opens up opposite, and it's in the back. Does not have an armrest, but just look at how it's hinged with the arch. Just take a look inside real quick. That's how much space you have to get back there. Handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Operates like this, goes down. Almost all the way.
here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a real quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. As you can see in this car, there's lots of pillars and posts. This is what visibility looks like out the rear from the back seat. Notice a split window in the back. Look at all of the windows from the side view. Here is what the seat profile looks like. It's a bit, I don't know how to really describe it. This bench could probably be narrower. I mean, like, look, it's like one, two, three of my hand length long. It's, it's a pretty wide bench. There are creature comforts back here. You could hold on to this if you wanted to, but this is more or less a robe rail to put a heavy blanket so that you could cover up if it got cold. If you drove this car in the winter time, the heating, the heater was generally down there. If it, if it was equipped with one, this one doesn't seem like it has a heater. So it would get cold back here. Ashtray, there is a recessed light. I guess it's not really recessed. It has this bezel around it. Grab handles to hold on to. The windows go down here as well as these windows open somehow. So look at that. It's a vent window for the rear. It's so classy. There is an armrest here. Just look at that beautiful overhead valve, inline eight, oil bath air cleaner, generator, and all the steering stuff, horn. I'm gonna take a look at the other side. This hood isn't that heavy, but just look at how it's shaped. So there it is. It says Buick valve in head in line eight silent oil cushion distributors on this side. So is the uh, fuel filter and fuel pump and the starter and another horn. On the positive side, different and affordable overhead valve, straight eight, silk smooth performance, huge glove box camera fits inside. This car is well appointed at the price point with front and rear windows that roll down as well as rear quarter vent windows that open, cow vent, robe rail, armrest, front and rear, styling. Buick made some really nice cars, and this is another one. Against it, honestly, I can't think of very much other than the kick panel to enter ratio could be better. Also, it's worth mentioning that before 1937, all Buick straight eights had poured and or Babbitt style bearings. So if a bearing goes bad, it might be an expensive venture to get that fixed. After 1937, all Buick inline eight cylinder engines go to the shelf bearing and or the ones that can be removable more easily. Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1936 Studebaker Dictator four-door St. Regis for $745 or 1936 Buick Special Sedan for $885, or 1936 Nash Ambassador 6 for $885. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, would you rather have a 1936 Custom 6 for $785, or 1936 Buick Special for $885 or a 1936 DeSoto S1 Airstream for $795. Going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to name that tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. <laughs> 
hint for that song. It's not from the 50s or 60s. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodle! Good, how are you, man? Good. Okay. Yeah.